China is pouring trillions of yuan into infrastructure investment, a stimulus that could help the world's second-largest economy far beyond the gloom of Covid lockdowns and property market turmoil this year. Beijing is making 6.8 trillion yuan, about $1 trillion of government funds available for construction projects. Whether the projects are a success or end up as white elephants will help determine the outlook for China for years to come. Here's a guide to where the funds are going. Deserts in North China are set to host an unparalleled build-up of renewable energy. In recent months, construction began on wind and solar power bases, which by 2030 will contain about as much renewable capacity as currently in all of Europe. The first phase, with about 100 gigawatts of turbines and solar panels, is due to be completed by next year, with another 450 gigawatts phase started this year. China forecasts to widen its solar and wind energy lead over Europe and US. According to state media, the second phase will cost more than 3 trillion yuan. The energy will be delivered to the densely populated eastern seaboard via ultra-high-voltage transmission lines. This year, China's state-owned grid company intends to construct 13 of them. The world's longest water tunnel. Construction of canals, dams and reservoirs has been stepped up, with more than 800 billion yuan set to be invested in those projects this year. The most ambitious is a 200-kilometer-long tunnel moving water from the country's Yangtze River to a reservoir that feeds northern China, a scheme known as the South-North Water Transfer Project. It would be the world's longest water tunnel, beating the current record holder in Finland, and parts of it would be as deep as one kilometer underground. Projects that move water around the country account for about a third of China's water infrastructure spending, according to estimates by Wenjing Zhong and Sarah Rogers, researchers at the University of Melbourne. Planned projects could increase the amount of water available for use in China by 122 billion cubic meters annually, they estimate that's about five times the amount of water Germany uses each year. From concrete sprawl to greener cities. Building urban infrastructure, including urban roads, gas and water pipe networks and parks, is the most popular choice for spending by local governments, which account for the bulk of China's infrastructure spending. After decades of sprawling concrete, attention is now being paid to greener cities. The Songya Lake Ecological New City in central China, which started building this year and is expected to cost 200 billion yuan, has stated that 70% of the area would be left for water and green spaces. The under-construction metropolis of Xiongan outside Beijing, which planners across the nation are using as a model after President Xi Jinping championed it, has the same ratio of structures to natural space. The other favored investment of local governments are industrial parks providing low-cost facilities to businesses. Local governments spent about a third of funds raised from selling bonds on urban infrastructure and industrial parks in the first quarter, according to official data. At that rate, they could spend about 1.4 trillion yuan on such projects this year alone. More than twice the high-speed rail in the world. China already has 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, more than twice as much as the rest of the planet combined, and dozens of big-ticket projects are still ongoing. The most ambitious is a 1,629 kilometers line from Sichuan province in the southwest to the Tibetan capital Lhasa, climbing more than 3,000 meters through earthquake-prone terrain and glacier. It's expected to be completed by 2030. The total cost of the entire project is about 320 billion yuan. China said this year it plans to have 70,000 kilometers of high-speed rail by 2035. But that actually implies about a 40% decline in the amount of track built each year compared with the pace set over the past five years. In other words, while China will continue to outspend the rest of the world on rail, its spending could gradually decline. 